Hey everyone! Uh, so I just wanted to do like a little Bible study with you guys tonight. Um, this is something that came to me in scripture, or in script. It is in scripture, but it came to me in church while um, while Dan was preaching. And the message today was so good, you guys. I mean, it's always good. But if you didn't get a chance to check it out um check it out on live stream livestream.com slash rlc cadillac uh promoted by god it's been in a series of a few weeks now and um hey guys give me some hearts as you're coming on um but anyways during um hey cindy during church today i thought of this scripture and i really felt like it was a good teaching for all of us as leaders hi jess and um if you have your bibles like grab them a second because we're kind of going to go verse by verse with this psalm 24 i'm reading out of the new living translation so if you have that translation you could open it up um or look on your phone on new version for the new living translation we're gonna go verse by verse like i said and we're gonna talk about this as a psalm that teaches us as leaders uh how to have a right heart as a leader okay um and how to keep our hearts right i guess hey <laughs> thanks guys um so I'm going to start with verse one and um, it's a really like a challenging passage of scripture for leaders, but it's really, really encouraging as well. And I feel like it's super important for us to recognize like to be a good leader, we have to watch our hearts. We have to keep our character right and keep our hearts right before the Lord. So hi, Terry. Um, so this is about a leader's heart, Psalm 24. And I write in my Bible, you guys, I write, it's going to be backwards for you, but I wrote at the top of Psalm 24, a leader's heart, about a leader's heart. <laughs> so I put it, and I have lots of little notes in here next to each verse. So I'm just going to go verse by verse. Okay, we're going to start with verse one, Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. Okay, so the first principle that I want to talk about is the fact that the world and all the people in it belong to God. People are not ours to do with as we please or to uh, get us to our goal. People are not there to help us succeed necessarily, even though God will send people to help us. People belong to God. So we just have to recognize that as leaders, that all the people around us, that um, maybe we have a team of people in our business or in our job, maybe um, in our ministry, in ministries, we have, we have to work with teams of people. People are definitely resources, but they are God's and they belong to him for his purposes. So um, every person has a purpose purpose and it, their purpose is the Lord's. Their purpose is not ours first uh, as leaders. Their purpose belongs to God and they belong to God. Okay. So the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all its people belong to him. Something that so important for uh, leaders to remember for um, that we wouldn't ever use people for our own means or our own end, you know, but that um, knowing that God has them here on purpose for his purposes and for his kingdom. Okay. For he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Verse three, who may climb the mountain of the Lord? And I feel like this means he's asking like, who is going to be allowed to come closer to God? Who's going to be allowed into his presence? Hey, Tracy. Um, and Hey, Heather. Uh, who can come, climb the mountain of the Lord, come closer to God, uh, into his presence and, um, intimacy with him. And I can't read what I wrote here in the margin. <laughs> I don't know, but closer, uh, closer to God. Oh, be promoted. Like Dan was talking about, like being promoted by God. Um, who's going to be allowed to be promoted closer to God in his presence and have like a higher, maybe position or place in God's kingdom. And that would be the mountain of the Lord. Okay. Who may stand in his holy place? Verse four gives part of the, starts to give the answer. Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. Now, 
This doesn't mean you have to be perfect in order to be promoted by God. This just means hands and hearts represent like outer actions, things that you might do with your hands, serve, serving. So that's outer actions. And then hearts that are pure would be your inner thoughts and your motives. Okay, so as a leader, we need to watch what we do, but especially watch what our inner thoughts and our motives are. If our, our outer actions and our inner thoughts are pure, they don't have to be perfect, you guys. You're human. It's okay <laughs> to be human. But pure meaning we have right motives towards the Lord and we are trying to do the right thing, okay? So outer actions and inner thoughts are pure. Who do not worship idols and never tell lies. Now that sounds somewhat impossible and idols do, is not like something that we um, think about especially in the western world we don't um we don't bow down to literal idols in the western world okay but we still can have idolatry in our hearts if we trust in anything other than god so god is saying leaders have in order to have pure hearts you cannot put your trust in anything other than God. And that means we have to watch that we aren't putting our trust in our spouses, that we're not putting our trust in our bank accounts, in our job, or in our ministry, in our position. Uh, we're not putting our trust in people or our family or, um, you know, uh, like I said, our, our position, you know, in, the, in ministry or in our job. Um, because what if it's taken away? Is that going to shake your whole world if something is taken away? Like that's kind of what will give you a clue to what you put your trust in. If something is taken away, will it shake your whole world? Um, but instead putting our trust in God and never tell lies means more means again, inward, um, thoughts. So, those whose hands and hearts are pure, who don't worship idols and never tell lies, that really means inward honesty, that you are brutally honest with yourself and with God. There's a scripture that says, um, God is saying, I desire truth in the inward parts, like in the deepest parts of your heart and your soul. Just admit your stuff. Like we're all human. We have junk. If you will be a good leader and you will be promoted by God to more and more levels of authority in God's kingdom if you can just be honest with yourself and with God. Like completely gut level honest, pour out your heart and let him know, you know what? I got this junk. I can't fix it myself. I've tried so many times to do this life my own way. I've tried to fix it. It's not working. I need you, Jesus. You know, that's just humility. It's just being honest. It's just going, I have pride. Okay. I've got walls up. I've got fears and I let my fears like take over sometimes. You know, if you are honest with yourself and with God and you bring your junk to the Lord, that's what makes a good leader. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect because you never will be, <laughs> but inward honesty, okay? So you're putting your trust in God and when you recognize that you're not trusting God, all you do is just repent and give it to him and put your trust back into, you know, in him again. Kind of like David did in a lot of the Psalms, he'll be like, oh, I'm so, you know, my soul is downcast. I'm so depressed. Everything is horrible. My life is falling apart, you know, basically he's saying throughout his whole psalm. And then by the end of the psalm, he's saying, but I'm still going to put my hope in you. I'm going to trust you again, Lord. And I know you're going to come through for me because you've never failed me before. So that's how we can be a good leader as well. Put our trust back in God, be completely honest with the junk that's happening on the inside. And even our motives, like if you have a motive that is um, not quite right and you just know it, just be honest. That's what makes a good leader again. Okay, so those people who have outward actions are pure and their inner thoughts and hearts are pure. They, they are honest with themselves and they put their trust in God. Verse 5 says, 
those ones will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. Isn't that what we're all looking for? So that makes a good leader. If you just have a right relationship with God, the Lord's blessing is on you, on your ministry, on your business, on your family, on your marriage. Okay, he promises that. Psalm 24, verse 5, they will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. This is true wealth, you guys. This is true success, <laughs> is having the Lord's blessing and having a right relationship with him. Verse 6, such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God of Jacob, and which is amazing too. So that goes back to verse 3 that says, who can climb the mountain of the Lord, meaning who can go into his presence? Though These people who have outward and inward purity, and they're just honest with themselves and God. They have that right relationship with God. They're allowed to seek you and come into your presence and come up on the mountain of the Lord. Verse 7. Okay, this next section is so powerful. And it's again, it's still talking about our hearts, our hearts as leaders. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. This is telling us you can let or allow God to come fully into your heart or not. You are speaking basically to the doors of your heart and your soul and saying, open up, open up heart, open up soul. Let the King of glory enter in. Let him fully enter in. Let the walls come down. I don't want anything hindering God from coming fully into my heart and into my soul and bringing healing and bringing restoration to me. So that's the doors of your heart as a leader. Open them up. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little story of what this, um, like ancient gates, what in the time where there were kings, there was usually like a wall around a city, especially around um, wherever the palace or the, the castle was or whatever, there was a wall around it. And then there was a gate in the wall that would open up like this. On a, it was like on a pulley system and it would be setting in the wall and it would open up you know, sideways like that. And so when the king was coming towards the castle and towards the wall, then the people on the inside of the wall had to open the gate for him. And if they opened the gate only partially, he would not come in because that was a sign and a signal that enemies were um, nearby or they were, or that enemies had come into the city already. Uh, but only the king would only come in when the gate was fully opened up. And so that's really what this is referring to. Open your heart and your soul fully, completely to the king that's telling him, I'm wide open for you. I want you to come in. I trust you with my heart. I trust you with my soul. I trust you with all my junk. The basement of my heart is wide open to you. I'm not hiding anything from you anymore. King of glory, come in. And so that's what verse 7 means. That's what makes a good leader wide open to the king. Now, verse eight, who is the king of glory? Now, who is it? Who is he even? Like, it's just kind of challenging us as leaders. Find out who God really is. Because the Bible says when we see him, we will be like him. When we see him as he truly is, then we really know him. We know his heart. And when we know his heart, we will be like him. And we don't want to be like a God that is harsh and that is distant. We want to be like the real true God when we let him in intimacy fully into our hearts and our souls we'll find out who he really is who is this king of glory he's the lord strong and mighty the lord invincible in battle he always always wins whatever battles you're facing whatever is going on in your heart and in your soul whatever chaos is happening in your soul or in your body the Lord, when you open up to him, he's going to be invincible. He's always going to win every single time. So put your trust in him again and open, open up to him. Uh, let down the walls. Now, walls are just the age old, um, you know, pride, basically. That's the first sin. You know, it's just putting up walls. But when we put up walls, when people hurt us, the walls don't just keep the people out and protect 
protect us from people and from being hurt by people, the walls keep God out as well. So to let the King of glory in, we have to let down our walls of pride and open our hearts fully to him. He will always be invincible in battle. He will always bring chaos into order in our soul and in our heart if we if we open up to him. So verse nine says it again, open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors and let the King of glory enter. It's up to us if we can let him or not let him. It's, we have a free will and we have a choice. So let the King of glory enter. And again, who is this King of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies. He is the King of glory. So again, we have all of heaven's armies at our disposal. And God said earlier in the chapter, he said, you will receive the blessing of the Lord and a right relationship with him. And you will get to come up on the mountain of the Lord if you just open up your heart to him, open up your soul, be completely honest with him on the inside and let, let him purify the, your uh, inner thoughts and motives, and with inner thoughts and motives that are pure, then you have outer actions that are also going to be pure. I would love to hear um, what you guys' um, thoughts and comments are on that. So read through Psalm 24 and read it as the Lord speaking to us as leaders. He's giving us principles to live by, to become and be a good leader and to become closer and closer to the Lord. Now, being a good leader doesn't mean that you just have a lot of people that really like you and that want to follow you everywhere you go, basically. It means that you have that close relationship with God. It means that God can trust you with people around you. And it means that you, um, you want to get closer and closer to him. You want to come up to new levels in the Lord and you're coming up to new, um, I guess, platforms of ministry. Like he said, I trusted you with this one platform. Now I'm bringing you up the mountain a little bit higher, a little bit closer to me. You're going to see a little bit more from my perspective and I'm giving you a greater platform to be able to advance my kingdom basically. So, um, yeah, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about that, but if you didn't um, get to see this whole video, you'll want to watch it from the beginning. I'm just going to post it right now. So, um, but I would love to, yeah, thanks you guys for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts and your comments because um, it's just so beautiful when everybody has their own perspective. It's so rich. Oh, I'm going to read what Heather said right here. Uh, when I identify wrong motives, I confess them. Yes, exactly. So being honest with God is partly just like identifying it. Whatever's going on in the inside that's just yucky or junk, like that's being a good leader. Just identify it, let the Holy Spirit show you, and then confess it to him. And all you have to do is just say, I'm sorry, Lord, I didn't realize that was there. Please forgive me. That's why Jesus died for you, okay, to bring that forgiveness. And he really does remove it completely, and he helps you. The next time you're in that situation, and you're tempted to have that same motive again, the Holy Spirit's going to go, nope, you already took care of that. Like he's going to help you to stay free from that. The gift of confessing it is that we become pure and our motives become pure. That's exactly right, Heather. Awesome. Yeah. No, it doesn't disqualify you at all. It actually qualifies you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so confession purifies you and actually qualifies you to be a better leader that you um you're being honest with yourself you're being honest with God and then he's the one who actually makes you pure so it's the holy spirit the holy spirit's called holy because he makes us holy it's his, his work on the inside it's not that we have to be perfect and we have to make ourselves uh have right motives or do right things or be pure on our own we're only going to be pure and holy as we admit that we're we're not. We need your help. Holy Spirit, do the work on the inside of me and make me holy and make me pure. So yeah, so good, you guys. All right. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Um, again, please read that through and let me know what you think.